Today I want to talk about how the sun is held together, or how the sun works, okay? There's important things that happen. So we have to talk about the sun. This picture of the sun that you see right there is very cool. What makes the sun work? Hey, that's what we're going to talk about. Woohoo! Let's do it, okay. All right, hey, here's the key thing. How does the sun work? Well, there's a balance between its internal forces, between its internal forces. There's two things. There's thing I didn't write this down. There's, there's a lot of words I know. There's the hydrostatic equilibrium between a force that prevents the sun from collapsing and a one that holds it together. So here's the, here's the scoop here. Um, here's the uh, cross section of the sun. If you look over here, the sun is held together because you have tons and tons and millions of tons, gazillions of tons, googles of tons of things, of, of, of gravity, which is, of course, everything's attracted to itself. And so since you've got so much matter, it causes the sun to, the gases, to get very, very, very um, dense in the center. And so gravity causes it to get closer and closer and closer together. Now, an interesting thing is that if you did not have the outward pressure, the pressure from what we're talking about in a second, then it would actually sort of shrink down and become like a black hole. I don't know if a black hole, but a white dwarf or something like that. So you've got this immense, immense pressure or, uh, from gravity pushing downward. Now the pressure upward is, um, or the, the force, I should say, the force upward is the pressure from the um, uh, thermonuclear uh, reactions that are happening at the center of the sun. Okay, so the inward force is gravity, and the outward force arises from the sun's internal pressure. Now, what, where does that come from? All right. Now, interesting, without the balance, the sun would rapidly change. It would either explode or it would implode. Implode meaning coming together upon itself. Okay, so let's talk about this. So given that the sun loses energy as sunshine, an internal energy source must be present to maintain this equilibrium. So there must be some energy source that is causing the sun to continue to operate. So you can see energy is leaving the sun here, okay, all the time. Why doesn't it just change? Okay, so let's talk about that. Here is the key. In uh, 1905, Albert Einstein, kind of a famous uh, scientist dude, he came up with a very famous equation, E equals mc squared, which is right here. And he said that if you take m, that's the mass, mass in kilograms, mass is in kilograms, and you times it by the speed of light. Remember the speed of light, we've talked about that, it's 3.0, times 10 to the 8th, a meter per second. So interesting thing is you can take matter, mass, and you can convert it into energy, E, and you can get a lot of energy because you multiply it by the speed of light. Now speed of light's a big, big number. How big is it? Wow, it's big, okay. And you square it, how do you, if you take a big number and you square a big number, what do you get? That's right, you get a really, really, really big number. So you can get a huge amount of energy by converting matter into energy. Now, now how do you do that? Well, you do it um, through a process called a nuclear fusion. All right, everybody say nuclear fusion. Okay, good, you said that right. There was an old president sometime who, could, he, who mispronounced that. Okay, that's a whole other story. And uh, uh, here's the deal. If you take... Um, this is the element hydrogen with an extra neutron. They call it deuterium. Everybody say deuterium. Deuterium! And it reacts with another uh, uh, form of hydrogen called tritium. Everybody say tritium! They combine when it gets really, really hot with high, high pressure, and they combine and they make helium. But when they make helium, they also new, uh, skip out a neutron and they get a huge amount of energy. This is called a nuclear fusion. There's other ways to have nuclear fusion work, but this is the one that's in the sun. This nuclear fusion causes the sun to produce energy. And this causes that pressure. Remember we talked about the sun, and there's a pressure pushing outward. There's the core of the sun. There's a pressure pushing out, and that is from these nuclear fusion reactions. Okay, This would just cause this to explode. Okay, and otherwise it would not collapse. But then, of course, there's the other verse. I'll make it a different color. How about I make it the blue? Blue for the uh, gravity. Gravity will be blue. So you have this internal uh, the gravity, and they fight each other. And since they fight each other, they reach what's called equilibrium, where basically the force, the force outward is equal. That's an up arrow. Up arrow is equal to the force downward, and therefore it doesn't blow up. 
We've done nuclear fusion, by the way. Nuclear fusion is something that scientists have been able to manufacture on Earth. They are in nuclear fusion or hydrogen bombs, and they are very, very bad things. Uh, they would they destroy islands and whole cities and things, and yeah, not good. So that's how you power the sun. So how do we obtain all of this information? How do we learn so much about the sun? Well, the answer is there's a really cool telescope up in space. That telescope is called the SOHO telescope, the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory. It's a project, international collaboration between ESA and NASA, and you get the idea here. And so here's actually the, the telescope as it was being made, um, and you can see a, a close-up of it here. And this is what it looks like now in space. You kind of can see here's these, uh, these things right here, and then you can see them over here. And then, of course, it expanded, so this is the power source that uses uh, solar energy. And this is the telescope, and it actually kind of looks kind of funny. Most telescopes, you'd think there'd be like a big lens at the end, but this right here is essentially the lens. It's just a, well, it's a dish. And so they've got other things, and, and then it sends it back, you know, um, uh, back to the Earth, and we can uh, see it. Here's a, another picture of it here. And it started in 1995, it, December 2nd, it was launched. And uh, here's um, the way it looks, and um, yeah, it also can measure solar wind and all those kinds of things. So all these cool pictures that you're going to see or have seen, and the video clips, etc., are coming from this um, observatory in uh, space that measures in the X-ray spectrum. Uh, not just X-ray, it measures uh, X-ray and visible and all kinds of things. And so this is the uh, solar observatory. It's up in space somewhere, and that's how we can tell these things. Great. So I will see you today, not today, or whenever in class, and when I see you in class, we'll talk about the sun, because the sun powers everything, right? Right. Bye.